studied about semi-conservative mode of replication and experiments which exhibited semi-conservative mode of replication. And we had also discussed in plants, also it has been proved with radioactive nucleotides, the semi-conservative mode of replication. We had discussed that in the previous class. But the mechanism and the enzymes that are involved in replication, that we are going to study in today's class. So in the uh, replication part of it, you know that replication is a process which is taking place during the cell cycle. Yes, stage, synthesis stage, where the DNA double cell is brought about by replication process. And it is identical copies of DNA are produced. And why we call it a semi-conservative mode of replication, I have already told you. Because 50% of the parental strand is retained in the newly formed DNA and the remaining 50% is the daughter strand or newly synthesized strand. So the parental strand we always call it as template strand. You should remember that name, template strand. Whenever I am utilizing it above, it means from the strand in which a new DNA or new strand is synthesized. We call it as parental strand or template strand. Please remember about that. So uh, in this entire diagram, if you look into it, replication, they would be having, you know that anti-parallel strands are there. They have two strands which are anti-parallel in direction. One is from 5' prime to 3', prime, another is from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Okay, they are held by this bonds, hydrogen bonds of the uh, complementary base pairing that is there. Now at the ori side, the origin of replication they would undergo uh, unwinding by any case enzyme. This information is not given in your book. Unwinding brought about by any case enzyme or it is also called as unwindings. So they are going to unwind and this part we call it as the replication flow. So once they have unwinded by the disintegration of the bonds, so now they act as the template strands. That is from 5 prime to 3 prime. So now there are certain enzymes which brings about replications. Especially there are two important enzymes you should remember. DNA dependent, DNA polymerase and there is the ligase enzyme. DNA dependent, DNA polymerase and ligase enzyme. The DNA dependent, uh, DNA polymerase, they are going to synthesize the new strand always in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime. So when the template strand is from 3 prime to 5 prime, they have some additional complications. So the synthesis of uh, the uh, strand, new strand, in the direction of 3 prime to 5 prime will be discontinuous. So which call it as discontinuous strands or lagging strand. So the continuous strand can also be called as leading strand. You should remember about the orange colors represent the newly synthesized. So this is about the diagram part of the replicating four, the understanding of this, the parental strand is called as the DNA, template DNA, you should remember about that. So now they have studied this in the E. coli, initially they have done it in E. coli or Escherichia coli which is a bacteria and it is a prokaryotic organism. Okay? In Escherichia coli the process of replication involves a lot of enzymes, the set of enzymes we call it as machinery, replication machinery. The sum total of enzymes involved in replication, we call it as replication machinery. Okay. So the important enzyme is DNA dependent DNA polymerase. They are dependent on DNA. DNA temperature and DNA macro polymerase enzyme and type. DNA polymerase are they synthesize DNA. DNA dependent DNA polymerase. So this enzyme uses the DNA template strand and there is polymerization of nucleotides, that is the formation of new strand. What is polymer? Repeated sequence of monomers, isn't it? So there is a polymerization of nucleotides that is brought about by the enzyme DNA dependent DNA polymerase. So these enzymes are highly efficient and accurate and within a short period of time they bring about the complete synthesis of a new strand. Highly efficient, high accuracy within a short period of time. They are going to completely synthesize the daughter strand or newly synthesized strand is synthesized within a short duration of time. 
for that we have given the example of E. coli. It has base pairs of 4.6 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. How much do they have? 4.6 into 10 to the base pair, 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. What about human beings? 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs we have in our DNA. Okay. So now this length of DNA is synthesized by this replication process within 38 minutes. This length of DNA in E. coli 4.6 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs are synthesized within 38 minutes. So that is brought about by the DNA dependent DNA polymerase enzyme. So within a short duration of time, if you calculate it, it is about 2000 base pairs are synthesized in one second. So such is the fast mechanism of replication that is happening and there is accuracy. If there is no replicational accuracy in it, tappai they synthesize it only in another If there is a wrong synthesis, what does it lead to? Mutation. It leads to mutation. So remember about that aspect of it. Not only fast but also high level of accuracy. If any mistake occurs in the synthesis process, it leads to mutation. That is what you have to remember about. Energetically, consumption of energy for this entire replication process, it is obtained from deoxyribonucleotide. Okay? D-nucleotide, deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate. ATP is the source of energy in normal process, isn't it? Energy currency of the cell is adenosine triphosphate. But here you have a deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate similar to that of adenosine triphosphate. And they require high amount of energy. It's an expensive process, money-wise, energy-wise. It requires a large amount of energy for replication process to happen. And that is obtained from which molecule? Not ATP, it is obtained from deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, which is similar to ATP. Okay. So they are source of energy. From that they get this high amount of energy. So additional enzymes are required apart from deoxyribo, DNA dependent DNA polymerase, additional enzymes are required. I told you about helicase or unbindase. There is also ligase enzymes are required. The discontinuous strands, they are all pasted by ligase enzymes. The discontinuous strands, they are also called as Okazaki fragments. Those discontinuous strands, you can, in, uh, they also call it as Okazaki fragments. Okay. They are all pasted by ligase and they become continuous strand. Okay. Remember about that. So the replication core, in, in some of them, it continues like a replication alone. There is no formation of replication core because the length of the DNA molecule is very small. In case of organisms having a DNA molecule whose length is very long, there it occurs as replication bubbles. At certain points, they undergo a replication. Okay, and that is identified as the uh, origin of replication site. Not all the places in the DNA they can commence replication. At very few places they can commence replication. That we call it as origin of replication site. Okay, so origin site or replication site. That is where the unwinding of this DNA strands takes place, and they are going to form a fork-like structure. That we call it as replication fork. A small opening occurs within the DNA helix. If you just these are all held together, a small opening occurs in the DNA replication fork. There is where there is unwinding of it. Replication bubble. And if you just take this much of it, it looks this way. Okay, replication fork. So a small DNA helix it undergoes unwinding and they form a replication bubble and they, they you can notice this replication fork like structure. Okay. So that is what you have to remember about. Then DNA dependent DNA polymerase enzyme, which plays an important role, they can synthesize DNA only in one strand. Only in one direction they can synthesize, that is 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Okay. The synthesis of new DNA from DNA dependent DNA polymerase is in only one direction. What is that direction? 5 prime to 3 prime. The direction node is synthesis so 5 prime to 3 prime synthesis are DNA continuous agarat. 
ಈ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಆಂಟಿ ಪ್ಯಾರಲೈಸ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸ್ ಆಗಿರ್ತಾರೆ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಎನ್ಎ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಲಿಮರೇಜ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ಲಿ ಯು ಸೇ ದೇ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ and those uh, discontinuous fragments we call it as okazaki fragments i discussed about that so continuous strands on template of 3 prime to 5 prime you can notice parental strand 3 prime to 5 prime is there our <coughs> dna in our direction and synthesize again anti parallel to it 5 prime to 3 prime 3 prime to 5 prime only or you can also call it as towards the fourth synthesis towards the fourth is always continuous synthesis away from the fourth is this continuous synthesis towards the template strand 3 prime to 5 prime sorry uh, 3 prime to 5 prime is a continuous strand the uniform strand will have one direction 5 prime to 3 prime a direction of the movie okay this continuous strand it is synthesized away from the replication core and the template strand what is the direction that they have template strand will be it will be 5 prime to 3 prime the discontinuous strands are synthesized as 3 prime to 5 prime so each fragment we call it as okazaki fragments we point out the name of it the discontinuous fragments are joined by later joined by ligases and they also become a continuous strand initially they are discontinuous but by the completion of the dna replication they also become continuous strand that is what you have to remember definite region on e coli where replication commences we call it as origin of replication site a site of origin of replication so the same concept we utilize why do we require vectors in case of biotechnology experiments recombinant dna technology vectors only they have that site where replication can commence now i'll cut and paste mark you desired gene we paste it there in the vector like p pbr322 we paste it there and where does the replication occur with the included new dna desired dna it occurs from the origin site vectors are utilized with the same concept of because they have this ori site origin of replication site is there from which they, are, they can multiply with the newly introduced dna fragment okay so remember about that eukaryotes the replication takes place in the s phase of the cell cycle you have this G1, G0 is there, G1, uh, then yes, then G2 phases are there, isn't it? Then you have this M phase, cell cycle, if you remember that. So, the cell cycle are there, yes phase and synthesize are there, replication are there, DNA, they double up. Immediately there is a formation, they undergo cell division. Immediately after synthesis of DNA, replication of DNA, it is followed by cell division. ಈ ಕೆಲವು ಸಲ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಗದೆ ಸೆಲ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಆಗಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲವು ಸಲ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೆಲ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಇಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸೆಲ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪಾಲಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡಿ ಡಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡ್ ಟೆಟ್ರಾಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆ ಥರ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಪಾಲಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಪಾಲಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡಿ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಮೈಂಟ್ ಅರೈಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ದಟ್ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪಾಲಿಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಟ್ so that is what we wanted to discuss about for today's class in the next class we will discuss about transcription what is transcription the process of synthesis of mrna from dna in presence of an enzyme dna dependent rna polymerase we call it as transcription reverse transcription the reverse process the process of synthesis of dna from rna in presence of rna dependent dna polymerase a enzyme we call it as reverse transcription so this is simple definitions you might not find it in your books but that is what we used to discuss in the state syllabus so remember about this uh, transcription reverse transcription where there is a synthesis of mrna in reverse transcription there is a synthesis of dna transcription only mrna synthesize agutte reverse transcription only dna synthesize agutte aa dna synthesize in reverse transcription we call it as cdna cdna and complementary dna okay cdna antha karithu 